The courtroom buzzed with an electric tension as Elias K. took the stand. Once the shadowy puppeteer of Amsterdam's criminal underworld, Elias now stood exposed under the unforgiving glare of fluorescent lights. The collective gasp of those present was almost audible as he began to talk, really talk, unraveling secrets long buried in darkness. Just a few months prior, Elias had been untouchable, a ghost haunting the city's seedy corners. His name was whispered in fear and reverence. He'd orchestrated the cold-blooded hits on Alex Gillis in Zandam and Masood Amin Hosseini in Osdorp, and was behind the tragic mistaken identity attack on Stefan Regalo Edgemont, an innocent who met a brutal fate only because he drove the wrong car on the wrong day. Now, as Elias recounted every gritty detail, how the hits were planned, who pulled the triggers, where the weapons came from, the scope of his transformation became clear. But how did a 36-year-old criminal mastermind fall so spectacularly from grace? His story began quite differently. Born and raised in Amsterdam, young Elias was drawn into organized crime by the tantalizing promise of money, power, and respect. Unlike many street thugs, Elias was smart, calculating, and adept at forging critical alliances. These qualities quickly elevated him among the ranks of the Dutch underworld. Elias's early ventures included drug trafficking, dealing everything from crack to more sinister substances that fed the city's insatiable appetite for vice. His operations didn't stop there. He delved into arms dealing, supplying weapons for those eager to settle scores or expand their turf. It was a perilous game, but one Elias played with chilling expertise. The underworld of Amsterdam is notoriously volatile, a realm where alliances shift like sand and power struggles ignite like tinder. Over the years, the city had witnessed brutal turf wars, with rival gangs clashing for control over lucrative drug routes, territories, and influence. By the time Elias climbed to power, the tension was palpable, the underworld teetering on the edge of an all-out war. It was a war for survival, dominance, and the right to rule the shadowed streets of Amsterdam. Each conflict was bloodier than the last, each battle fought with increasing ferocity. Yet here, in the starkly lit courtroom, the man who once held the city in his grip now laid it all bare, his empire collapsing under the weight of his own revelations. As the factions clashed for dominance, Amsterdam transformed into a war zone. The stakes had never been higher, and the body count skyrocketed. Gangs that had once maintained a tenuous coexistence were now locked in brutal conflict, with old alliances disintegrating and new ones forming in the crucible of violence. Amid this chaos, Elias emerged not just as a participant, but as a mastermind behind some of the era's most ruthless assassinations. One of the most infamous killings was that of Alex Gillis in Zonda. The date is seared into the collective memory of the underworld. A meticulously executed hit, it reverberated through the network of crime. By then, Elias was deeply embedded in the criminal hierarchy, allegedly orchestrating the strike that left Gillis lifeless in a pool of blood a stark testament to Elias's calculated brutality. The details of this murder are chilling. Gillis was ambushed, the kill carried out with surgical precision. His body was left as a grim message. Elias would stop at nothing to cement his power. This was no ordinary hit. It was a declaration of dominance that only intensified the ongoing turf war. Perhaps the most heartrending episode linked to Elias was the mistaken identity slaying of Stefan Regalo Edgemont, an innocent man killed for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The tragedy hinged on a car, one that bore an uncanny resemblance to that of Elias's intended target. On that fateful day, Elias's associates, given faulty intel, tailed Edgemont's vehicle. Operating under a false assumption, they riddled the car with bullets, ending Edgemont's life instantly. The realization that they had murdered an innocent did nothing to temper the relentless violence. Instead, it underscored the brutal, indiscriminate nature of the world Elias inhabited. Amsterdam's streets grew ever more perilous, an arena where survival was uncertain. The violence continued unabated. Masood Amin Hosseini's execution was another high-profile killing that rattled the city. It was mercilessly efficient, allegedly masterminded by Elias. Hosseini, a significant underworld figure, was gunned down with a precision that broadcast a clear and chilling warning. The ripples of Hosseini's murder spread quickly, leaving other criminals scrambling for safety, knowing their time could come next. 
Then there was Anas el Ajudi's killing in the Diamantburt area of Amsterdam South, a neighborhood familiar with violence, but never on such a scale. Elias, whose fearsome reputation was by now well established, was reportedly involved yet again. El Ajudi became another casualty in the ruthless power struggle, his death etched as another grim chapter in the ongoing saga. This assassination resonated deeply, not just for the loss, but for the signal it sent. The war was far from over. Each attack fed a cycle of fear, distrust, and retaliation, dragging Amsterdam deeper into chaos. The city wasn't just a battleground, it was unraveling, one brutal hit at a time. Just like all sagas, Elias K's story also met its inevitable end. The downfall of this ruthless gang lord, who once ruled Amsterdam's streets with an iron fist, came with his dramatic arrest. When news broke that the notorious criminal had finally been apprehended, it was as if the entire city exhaled in collective relief. This wasn't just another routine takedown, it was the climax of years of painstaking investigation and relentless surveillance. Elias K's capture played out like a high-stakes scene in a crime thriller. Authorities had spent years meticulously gathering evidence, unraveling the intricacies of his criminal empire. When they finally made their move, the operation was executed with surgical precision. They caught Elias off guard, ensuring no avenue of escape. The charges were staggering. He faced accusations of orchestrating three murders and planning two other hits, all within a terrifyingly short period. As the trial commenced, the courtroom transformed into a theater of high drama, hosting one of the most gripping legal battles in memory. The prosecution's case was ironclad, built on a mountain of evidence including forensic reports, witness testimonies, and the most incriminating of all, statements from Elias himself. From the start, the gravity of the accusations was unmistakable. The prosecution painted Elias as a man who clawed his way to power through unrelenting brutality, wielding death as a tool to eliminate rivals and instill fear. They argued that Elias was not merely another player in these crimes, he was the mastermind pulling all the strings. Witness after witness took the stand, each peeling back another layer of Elias's dark dealings. Former associates recounted how he orchestrated hits, sourced weapons, and coordinated with other criminals to execute his deadly plans with unnerving accuracy. The evidence was overwhelming, leaving no doubt that the prosecution aimed for the harshest penalty possible. Then came the climax that everyone awaited, the demand for a life sentence. On June 22, 2021, the date became etched in the annals of Amsterdam's fight against organized crime. The prosecution's closing argument was detailed and devastating, laying bare the heinous nature of Elias K's crimes. They highlighted his involvement in the deaths of Alex Gillis, Stefan Regalo Edgemont, Masood Amin Hosseini, and Anas El Ajudi, arguing forcefully that these actions warranted the maximum punishment under the law. Thus, the chapter closed on Elias K, a chapter marked by violence, fear, and unrestrained ambition, culminating in a trial that offered the city a semblance of justice and an end to a reign of terror. The demand for a life sentence transcended mere retribution. It was a bold declaration to the criminal underworld. No one, not even the most powerful, is above the law. The prosecution underscored how Elias had terrorized Amsterdam's streets and left a trail of death in his wake. His ongoing presence posed a colossal threat to society, and the prosecutors insisted that a life sentence was the only fitting response to the enormity of his crimes. As the courtroom grew silent, the significance of the prosecution's words weighed heavily in the air. This was a defining moment, not only for Elias K, but for the entire Dutch criminal justice system. The call for a life sentence proclaimed the end of Elias's reign of terror and the beginning of justice. Confronted with overwhelming evidence, Elias finally broke. The hardened criminal, who once prided himself on his cold-heartedness, found himself speaking up in hopes of securing a lighter sentence. When Elias K shattered his silence, it sent shockwaves through the underworld. A man who built his empire on fear, violence, and an unbreakable code had turned informant. It was unthinkable, yet it happened. Whispers of retribution began almost immediately. Elias's cooperation with the authorities wasn't just a threat to the freedom of his former associates, it threatened the very heart of their operations. Some predicted Elias would be a marked man for the rest of his life. No matter where he ended up, the reach of the underworld was long, 
and it had a history of dealing with traitors in the most ruthless ways possible. The public reaction was mixed. Media coverage was intense, dissecting every aspect of the case. Some saw Elias's decision as a necessary evil, a way to bring justice to Amsterdam's most dangerous criminals. Others viewed him as a coward, a man who turned informant to save his own skin. In the end, despite his cooperation, Elias received two life sentences. His transformation from feared kingpin to informant couldn't alter the severity of his crimes. He left behind a legacy of bloodshed and chaos, forever altering the landscape of Amsterdam's criminal underworld. For years, Elias had been the puppet master of Amsterdam's underworld, but faced with the possibility of life imprisonment, he realized he was cornered. The walls were closing in, and for the first time, Elias grasped the full weight of his actions. The empire he had meticulously built and the power he had accumulated now seemed inconsequential against the chilling prospect of spending his life in a cell. Driven by pure survival instinct, Elias began confessing in detailed, incriminating testimonies. Interestingly, he tried to downplay his role in the crimes. According to Elias, he wasn't the mastermind painted by the prosecution. He was merely a facilitator, not the one calling the shots. It was a classic attempt to mitigate his punishment by portraying himself as less culpable. Yet, his detailed revelations painted a starkly different picture, placing him at the very heart of the violence. One of the most shocking elements of his confessions was his betrayal of co-defendants. In the criminal world, this was an unforgivable act. Elias began naming names, and the fallout was immediate. One significant name he dropped was Gokhan, a notorious figure in his own right. Elias recounted a chilling moment after Alex Gillis' death, describing how he and a co-conspirator drove to meet Gokhan, who allegedly said, We just shot him dead. The criminal underworld thrives on a code of silence, and by shattering it, Elias effectively signed his own death warrant. The immediate backlash from his former associates was palpable. Elias's cooperation with authorities wasn't just a threat to their freedom, it threatened the very foundation of their operations. Whispers of retribution spread like wildfire as soon as the news broke. Many predicted Elias would be a marked man for the rest of his life. No matter where he ended up, the reach of the underworld was long and unforgiving, known for dealing with traitors in the most brutal manner possible. The public reaction to Elias's transformation into an informant was mixed. Media coverage was intense, dissecting and analyzing every twist of the case. Some viewed his decision as a necessary evil, a critical step toward bringing Amsterdam's most dangerous criminals to justice. Others saw him as a coward, a man who turned informant merely to save his own skin after realizing the gravity of his crimes. Despite his cooperation, Elias received two life sentences. His transformation from feared kingpin to informant couldn't alter the severity of his crimes. He left behind a legacy of bloodshed and chaos, forever altering the landscape of Amsterdam's criminal underworld. This betrayal marked a point of no return, forever altering the landscape of Amsterdam's underworld. The walls were closing in, and justice was tightening its grip on Elias K., a man who had for so long evaded its grasp. Gokhan's world turned upside down with that single statement. Accused despite his denials, he found himself on precarious ground. But Elias didn't stop at implicating Gokhan. He delivered comprehensive accounts of how weapons were arranged, logistics managed, and hits executed. According to his confessions, he wasn't just on the sidelines. He was deeply involved in procuring and supplying the weapons used in these attacks. One of the most incriminating revelations was Elias' admission to supplying arms for another suspect, who had been acquitted until Elias' testimony surfaced. This bombshell upended the entire case, causing significant delays as the court scrambled to reassess everyone's involvement. As Elias continued to unfold his story, it became clear that his motivations went beyond self-preservation. He aimed to untangle the web of lies and deceit that had defined his life, casting a glaring spotlight on his co-defendants. He exposed the inner workings of Amsterdam's underworld in unprecedented detail. But in choosing to spill these secrets, Elias sealed his own fate. The man who once seemed untouchable was now a marked target, not just by the law, but by the very criminals he betrayed. Elias's confessions placed him in the crosshairs of both the law and his former allies. The legal ramifications were immense. For his co-defendants, the stakes suddenly skyrocketed. 
Cases that had seemed nearly resolved were now thrust back into chaos, with the emergence of new evidence through Elias' detailed accounts. Originally, the courts were set to issue judgments on some of Elias' co-defendants by August 30th, 2021. However, with Elias' explosive revelations, the prosecution requested more time to reassess the evidence. His statements were vital to the ongoing cases, meaning that suspects who once anticipated leniency or even acquittal now faced the prospect of much harsher sentences. Judicial proceedings were thrown into disarray as everyone involved scrambled to adapt to the new developments. But Elias would not escape unscathed from his acts of betrayal. In the underworld he once dominated, snitching is considered the ultimate treachery. And the consequences for Elias were as certain as they were severe. His revelations sent shockwaves through the criminal community, turning allies into enemies and ensuring that Elias K., once feared and revered, was now a hunted man both by the legal system and the very underworld he once ruled. The criminal underworld thrives on a code of silence, and by shattering it, Elias effectively signs his own death warrant. The immediate backlash from his former associates was palpable. Elias's cooperation with authorities wasn't just a threat to their freedom, it threatened the very foundation of their operations. Whispers of retribution spread like wildfire as soon as the news broke. Many predicted Elias would be a marked man for the rest of his life. No matter where he ended up, the reach of the underworld was long and unforgiving, known for dealing with traitors in the most brutal manner possible. The public reaction to Elias' transformation into an informant was mixed. Media coverage was intense, dissecting and analyzing every twist of the case. Some viewed his decision as a necessary evil, a critical step toward bringing Amsterdam's most dangerous criminals to justice. Others saw him as a coward, a man who turned informant merely to save his own skin after realizing the gravity of his crimes. After all the twists and turns, Elias received not one, but two life sentences. The first was expected. He had been at the center of a criminal empire responsible for some of Amsterdam's most gruesome murders between 2013 and 2016. Then came the appeal. His lawyers made a fervent plea, arguing that Elias had shown remorse openly confessing to his crimes. They spent an entire day appealing for compassion from the court, hoping for a sentence less severe than life in prison. But on December 22, 2023, the final verdict was handed down. Another life sentence. The court ruled that Elias had indeed played a central role in the attacks on Alexander Gillis in Zandam and the innocent father, Stefan Edgemont. Additionally, they ordered him to pay nearly 692,000 euros in compensation to the victim's families. What are your thoughts on Elias' story? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to check out our channel. We've got many more stories from the underworld to share with you. See you in the next one.